Good. Good. Watch the tape. Talk to the coaches. Um, start on Seattle. What do you think the biggest difference was offensively in the red zone from the first half to the second half? Yeah, I'm always going to say, you know, execution, players making plays, you know what I mean? And they showed a little bit of what they were going to start doing, you know what I mean? So Drew had some, he got to some different things. It's kind of that, that cat and mouse game. If they do this, here's what I like. If they end up doing this, here's what I like. So, but, um, you know, I thought we ran it a couple times in there, and I thought Kyler made some big time throws, some receivers made some big time catches. So uh, it was good. With, uh, well, first of all, it was the GMAC Bowl. There you go, <laughs> um, GMA Siebel. That's right. The offensive line, you've talked about their progress yeah. all year long, but yeah. it just feels like they've quietly really gelled in a lot of ways yeah. and, and gotten you to where you needed to be. Are, are, what can you say about that group in terms of the, where they've gone from week one to, to where yeah. we are? Yeah, with some moving parts in there. You know what I mean? I mean, how many guys did we play? Five, six, seven guys yesterday, I think, you know? Um, you know, Clayton and, and Cookie have done a great job with those guys. The old line room, like, those guys are, you know, I talk about team first, team, and then you, like, typically O line rooms are very close knit, tight. It's not about one guy, it's not about you, it's about the unit and the team. And, and uh, so that's a really a cool room to be around. Um, but they have. They've gotten better and better and better, and we've had to adjust some things too, you know, with different quarterbacks in and out of the lineup, especially now with Kyler back in there. Just some different, we were talking about it today, some different techniques, some different schematics of it, what makes sense for us, different things like that. And then, you know, every week you're playing a new front, and they have different front mechanics, different players, you know. It's not just making a block. It's how they play those blocks, things like that. But... Um, they battle, man. That's what I love about them, and they, they're all in. Um, and they've done a really good job of improving. And you saw yesterday, I mean, we ran the ball really well. And, you know, Kyler was really not in duress. And, um, and then so he's making a bunch of plays with his arm, but it starts up front. Every, every game that you play, if you, you know, handle the line of scrimmage, you got a chance to win. Speaking of the offensive line, uh, how serious is Humphrey's knee? And Still working through it. He does got a knee, but we're still working through that as we sit here today. I'll have an update on Wednesday for you guys. Kyler mentioned in the second half getting into a groove and really attention to detail. How big was it in the second half? There was one play that resulted in negative yardage. And that was one yard. Huge. No yeah, no penalties. Stayed ahead of the sticks. No sacks. You know what I mean? So that's why every time you kind of look up, it's whether we're throwing it or running it, second and shorter, second and manageable. He converted some third downs too in there, but it's huge. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, you know, playing offense at a high level, you want to be able to dictate on your terms, you know, as much as you can during a game. You know, they're going to knock you behind the sticks every once in a while, or, you know, you're going to have to convert third downs or the red zone or whatever that is. But on mixed downs, can you play efficiently enough in the run and pass game with? Different play types too, you know, quick game. You saw yesterday, quick game, boot, run, shot, you know, all those different types. It's hard to defend. But it's it's hard to defend if you're executing it. So I thought they just did a really good job. It was a good plan um, from the coaching staff. The players obviously they executed. I thought they handled the different groups well. And then some of the unknowns with just three games to go off of, I thought they handled the unknowns extremely well. And um, so hats off to the coaches and players. You've talked about how all the different running backs have each bring something different in that room. With a duo like Michael Carter and James Conner, for this upcoming game against Seattle, but also looking a little bit towards the future, what do you think their potential is? Yeah, I mean, they're both good players, and Amari too. You know, he didn't play as many snaps yesterday, but he has a critical role, what we ask him to do, um, especially for a rookie. Uh, he has got, he's got a lot on his plate, plus playing fourth down too. So. Um, I thought they were both excellent. Obviously, James, you know, the running game goes through him. Then Mike came in and made some plays. You know, he made some guys miss, had some explosive runs, had the touchdown catch, broke a tackle right in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was a great acquisition. But that whole room, I, I expect those guys, when their number is called, to produce. And um, that's what they're doing. We saw, a photo, we saw a photo of you hugging Michael Carter in the locker room. What what has he added to the locker room? Yeah, he. I mean, the guy's. A, he's he has a lot of energy and juice to play football. 
He loves the game of football, and I love that about him. He's a competitor. He loves to practice. You know, you can't get him out of practice. He wants to take all the scout team reps, all the, the first team reps. He wants to practice. He's extremely intelligent. He's detailed in meetings. Um, I mean, he's kind of the perfect fit for what we're doing. You know what I mean? We want guys to be team first, all ball. That's what he is. When Jay was having the type of game that he had yesterday, and you obviously have the packages from the other guys, how do you balance, like, not – I guess slowing down his momentum. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's a good question, Josh. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's elements of how the game's going and when you want to spot them and different things like that. But, um, you know, obviously he got more reps than anybody, but he was running well. You know what I mean? He's making a lot of plays for us. And um, so we're going to, we're, we're mindful of play counts with those guys and how many shots they're taking, you know. And then sometimes, too, you get in a series, or if you want to do it like that, um, we do it a couple different ways. I'm not going to get into that. But if you get in a series where, say, Michael's in or Amari's in and you go three and out, well, then you know it can get a little weird. So, um, But Autry does a good job with those guys. Of ke- They all know everything, and they got to be ready to go. Um, but they're prepped, and they made a bunch of plays. James turning 29, which doesn't seem very Young. good at all. NFL starts to get old, but knowing everything you know about him, the person, the player, the physicality, style, mm-hmm. how much can he still be doing what he's doing next year and even beyond that? Well, I'll take it. Yeah, in my opinion, he, I mean, I don't look too much in the future because it makes me anxious, but so I'm worried about Seattle. But how, here's what I know about him. Um, you want to talk about in you know when you're outside of the white lines what he does from a conditioning standpoint from a recovery standpoint I would call that whole bucket physiotherapeutic standpoint there's nobody better so if they're you know if you think that um, certain guys start to you know fall off because they get a little older he'd be the one to delay it I know that the new, the new tight end I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. Travis. Vocal Travis, like Travis, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, hadn't been here that long. Yeah. So what did you see in him? Yeah, did a magic? good job. He <laughs> did a good job. Been here two weeks, never played a snap, go in and, and block Josh Sweat, yeah. Um, yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, he did. How many did he play? 19? 25. Yeah, he, yeah, he did a good job. Um, they were excited about it. You know what I mean? Never know how a guy's going to respond first time in the game, all things like that. But this guy, it's another one, kind of like Michael Carter, like, you know, assimilates right into the program with everything that we're doing, you know what I mean? Smile on his face, you know, loves to be out there, loves to practice, wants extra work, wearing Ben out, you know, his coach. Um, and he came in, did a good job. I honestly was a little, I wouldn't say concerned, but I had my eye on operationally, is he going to be okay, you know, out there? He was he was good. So I think, um, you know, he did a really good job. You know, losing Jeff, was a, that's a big piece for us, you know. And um, he stepped into that role and, and did extremely well. Another piece that came midway through the season was Roy Lopez. How do you think he stepped up? With awesome. That? I mean, starting that nose for us, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, play some different things. And he's a smart player, so we use his brains too. But he can anchor in there. He had a little bit of rush yesterday. Um, he's battling in there. He's taking four hands on most of the time with some big dudes coming at him. And uh, he stood his ground. He had good anchor. Um, made some plays, got some penetration at times. He's doing well. After the game, that he could definitely, you know, definitely help that you. He could tell it helped that you were in the that room for two years with them, and you know what, what they were running and everything. Now that's all done. How much did it help that you were there for? Two years? I don't know if it helped any. I don't know. A week of prep, same week of prep, but um, yeah. I mean, you guys know what I think about. The, you know, that's a really good offense. You know what I mean. So we we decided to play a certain way and. Um, you know, but they, they had a good day too. You know, we had some good three and outs, you know, and I didn't, I told you guys, I didn't love how the two minute went. Um, <clears throat> thought we could have done a better job there, but, you know, you hold the team to 24 points. It's, it's a pretty good day, you know, on defense for you. So um, hats off to the players because they, they made some plays. When you have a, uh, after this season with Monty and you go through exit interviews, I'm sure there's a ton of questions. Could ask you about that next week. Next but, week, yeah. But, <laughs> next week. but since we're on the subject, um, <laughs> who's on the subject? I, you are. Uh, you are. <laughs> I'm getting asked this question. Uh, you, you, you love guys who step up and deliver. Maybe who aren't expectedly supposed to. Uh, that connection you've got 
your personality with some a lot of these guys who are going to be free agents, how much are you going to champion their cause to money when you huddle and break yeah, down? Yeah, that's them? a good question, Bob. You, I would say that we, Monty and I, talk about every person on the roster daily. And um, so we're really in lockstep of uh, what we want to do. Now, <clears throat> he has to balance the future where I'm really not. But um, as far as my focus is on Seattle, you know what I mean? But we always – we constantly daily talk about the roster and the players. That's, that's the lifeblood of the program. So um, I feel really good about um, – you know, some guys that will have decisions to make uh, that they want to be here. That's what I'll say. So the, the connection you have with them. Yeah, I mean, I hopefully we have created an environment of competition, and hopefully that we, the players know that um, they know. I know they know that I have um, their best interest, and hopefully they know that we can make them a better player. So that's to me. If you're a player, uh, does the coach care about me, and can he make me better? And so I think we've, you know, fostered an environment of that. You look at everything in one week increments, right? Every, mm -hmm. But what can a win like that do? I know it's only one week left in the season. What can it do for a team? I mean, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's funny. I, I don't know that, Josh. I, you know, I was in there with both staffs today, all three staffs. And it's like, hey, after a loss, this is what we do. After a win, this is what we do. It's not much different, truthfully. So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's about our process and how we go about it and improving, you know what I mean? So, and, and actually Drew said, you could talk to Drew about it tomorrow. It's the best thing in the NFL is when you lose doing that. The worst thing in the NFL is when you win doing that because you don't really, you, you're not on that, you know what I mean? So our focus will be, hey, let's learn from what we had against the Philly and then get to Seattle. And uh, I don't say that like we truly live that because I think that's the way to be. So, um, and I honestly think the players appreciate that. So that's how we do it. What do you, what do you think was? What do you attribute to Michael Wilson? And all of a sudden, it started happening again. Yeah, in the second he played half well. after the yeah, he played well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got good resilience. Yeah, he's got good resilience. I mean, that fourth and goal, they got to have it, I would call it. That was a huge play. You know, he won. They brought a zero pressure. Kyler backpelled out of there and threw it to him. But uh, he made some big-time plays, you know what I mean? And Mike's going to be a big-time player for us. So it was good to see him. I mean, all the receivers, Dorch, you know, Rondell had some touches, you know, tight ends, the backs. You know, Kyler distributed. starts with the O-line like we talked about because he was upright. Kyler put the ball where it should go. And um, that's why it looked really good yesterday. You've always had great things to say about Buddha. Well, what's yeah. the one thing that you appreciate about him the most as, as a player and a leader? As a player, well, two different, I, I would say, questions there. Um, as a player, his versatility um, and his reliability and his toughness and his effort and his brain. So I just gave you about five. Um, as a leader, I think his attitude. Um, the guy comes to work, he never has a bad day, comes to work always wanting to improve and get better. And I would say the sign of a really good player for you is he elevates others around him, which is since he's been here, since we've been here with him, that's what he's done. Um, and not just the safeties or the back end. I'm talking about the linebackers and the D line and the coaches. You know, so that's a valuable piece to have. How's Gary feeling? Good, good. We'll see how it goes today. But uh, he had he rolled an ankle, um, but uh, he he looks like he's going to be okay. I know you mentioned after the game and heading into this entire week, you mentioned that it was just another game and. That was kind of just your focus with it. A lot of the players post game said that they wanted to win for you and for Nick and for the guys. <laughs> back. To have that support from the guys in the locker room, knowing that yes, they prepared like it was just another game, but they had you and Nick in mind. Was that a little game? extra oomph? I would, I would, I would say it like uh, everyone in that locker room had a little extra oomph for James going to Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? So you know when you're in the league long enough, you know I, I, I do think there's sometimes that. You know, certain guys, 
you know, I don't, it, you know, it means maybe a little bit more to them. You know what I mean? But um, the players know. Like, that's, it's not about me. It's about them. And they knew that. They, they wanted to go. I think James said it. You know, we wanted to make a trip, go to a, a playoff team fighting to be the one seed in our conference. And we wanted to go, you know, swing our, swing our shot. So um, that's what we did. And they played well and got it done. Do you, do you think that Kyler was even maybe more detailed and laser focused than he normally is because he mispracticed. The Jordan flu game? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if he, get, I said, I said that he came back and we we're watching on a plane, and I said, don't think that you, you know, you lit it up. Okay, I got it. You're practicing on Wednesday. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and he, he laughed. He's like, I know I am. But no, I, um, I think he spent a lot of extra time. You know what I mean? Not extra time, just different ways to get caught up. That's the first time I, I didn't know how he's going to play, truthfully, because I've never been around him to say, hey, he hasn't practiced for two days. How is it going to go? You know what I mean? So, because you, when you have, you know, experience with certain guys, you kind of have a feel of what's going to happen a little bit. And I honestly didn't know because it was the first time. So, um, but. He's a gamer, man. He puts everything into it every week, just like all our guys do. And he went out and played well. And a um, huge reason, huge part of why we won that game. Special, right? Like he's very good at what he does. What makes him so, <coughs> so good, so elite, so special? Boy, that takes me too long. Um, I think, um, you know, everything that you want out of a quarterback, command, um, competitiveness, uh, then when you talk about the skill set, uh, accuracy, decision making, arm talent, then you go, when that doesn't happen, ability to extend plays. Um, and he sees the game, he's never sped up. So he sees it, you know, extremely fast, extremely quick. He's not sped up. And, and honestly, I think that it will improve as we move forward because he's eight weeks into a system. So I think sky's the limit. What goes through your head when you see Monty so amped up after a game? He gets juiced up all the time, man. You know, he's passionate just like those whole building is. You know what I mean? He knows what the players put into that to, to win a game. And um, like I said yesterday, you know, it falls on me. We haven't won enough this year. Um, but, uh, you know, he's appreciative of their effort, uh, their commitment, and um, their willingness to fight. You know what I mean? And that's that's the sign for him of, uh, you know, we assembled some people that will do that week in and week out. So that's a good sign. How you guys been playing with Kyler back? Does this feel like a tale of two seasons, like before Kyler and after Kyler? Mm. No, it doesn't. It doesn't.